Hi everyone, welcome to 10 Minute Medicine. Today we're going to be speaking about discharge summaries. My name is Dr. Ali Asani and I'm a foundation year trainee in the West Midlands. So why are discharge summaries important? Well, it's a clinical report that you or one of your colleagues will prepare that will conclude um, everything that's happened within a hospital stay or series of treatments for a patient. Now, it's very important that this is done accurately and properly because it is a legal document. And if things are written incorrectly, it may lead to further issues in the future and potentially endanger the patient. So what are some of the things that are included in a discharge summary? So using this um, wonderful template that was made by the Royal College of Physicians, it talks about every single thing that will be on any discharge summary, regardless of the trust you're in. So the things in blue, patient demographics, GP practice, social context, so who their kin is, et cetera, all these things will be auto-populated. So you don't need to particularly worry about them. And then we move on to the admission details. So why have they come in? The date and time of this admission, um, the method of this admission, so has it been elective, is it an emergency, anything that's not elective is considered an emergency admission. Um, and then any past medical, surgical or mental health history, you always want to mention there usually is a separate section for it. And then there's a diagnosis section where you want to include the primary diagnosis, so what is the main reason they've stayed in, and their secondary diagnosis. So if they've had a HAP and that you've treated it, sometimes you can choose to include that in here. So you'd write hospital acquired pneumonia, and then you put a dash and you'd write treated. Then we move on to the clinical summary. So that's where you'll talk about the presenting complaint, history of presenting complaint, and what's happened up till now. Then we move on to the procedure. So have they had any procedures while in hospital? So has an abscess been drained? Have they had an NG tube in? Have they had to go for a radiological drain of something? Have they had an OGD um, or an endoscopy or a colonoscopy? And you want to include that in here. And also then any investigation results. So GPs do usually have access to blood results, but they don't always have access to chest x-rays and abdominal x-rays and ECGs. So you want to make sure to mention ECGs whether they were normal sinus rhythm, whether they were AF. If they were a new AF, what are we doing to follow it up? You want to include any abnormal results on chest x-rays or abdominal x-rays, or you want to mention that they're normal, because sometimes some GPs may not be able to access them. Moving on to discharge details and plan. So date and time of discharge, discharge destination. Some places will auto-populate that, and in some places you need to do it yourself. Plan and requested action. So you need to make clear what do you want the GP to do? What is the hospital doing as follow up? What are we organizing as our team? What other teams have planned to organize for the patient as well? And these you want to make sure are clearly documented because this is the one section that the GP will take specific care of to make sure that anything that they need to do will get picked up. Finally, any information and advice given. So if we've informed the patient to now start a low sodium diet or um, you know, a low potassium diet, that's something you want to make clear. So you want to write, patient has been advised to be started on, um, et cetera. Then any patient and carer concerns, ex expectations and wishes. So if the patient has recently signed a DNA CPR, you want to mention it in there and say, during this admission, there was a discussion around CPR and what the patient would like in the long run. Um, and the patient has signed a respect form. And also any next appointment details. Usually you don't always have the specific date and time of these appointments, so you want to make sure that you document that the patient will be contacted directly by the team. Finally, we go into medication. Now this really does vary from trust to trust, but you want to make sure all medications, the name, form and route are included, how long the medication is meant to be taken for, and then how it's to be taken, so thrice a day, twice a day, PRN, regular, etc. If you've changed any of the patient's original medication, so for example, if they were on um, paracetamol 500 milligrams and you made it a gram, you want to explain that and write why you've amended it. Or if they were on a low dose of bisoprolol and you've upped it to 2.5 milligrams, again, you want to write down why that's happened. So blood pressure wasn't very well controlled, so we have increased the dosage. Please monitor as appropriate, for example. Any drug that's a CD, which is a controlled drug, such as a morphine, um, or a morph, et cetera, you want to make sure that when you do print out the discharge summary, you need to write out and sign next to that drug because it is a controlled drug. Then we move on to adverse drug reactions. So do they have any allergies? And if they do, what is the reaction that comes with that allergy or any just adverse drug reactions? So do they get a rash or edema or anything like that? It doesn't have to be um, an anaphylaxis level allergy to be included in this section. Finally, at the end, you just need to include 
your name, role, organization, date and time completed. Again, usually this will be in auto-populated, but in some places when you print out the discharge summary, they want you to sign at the bottom as well. So you sign and stamp or write down who you are and your role. All right. So let's have a look at this example of a discharge summary. So we start with the patient demographics here, Mr. Anthony Stark, his date of birth, patient address, NHS number, and all of this has been auto-populated. Safety alerts, him being a Jehovah's Witness, again, this would auto-populate. However, if a patient is a Jehovah's Witness, it's worth also including that in the past medical history here. So looking at the GP practice details and social context again, GP practice would usually come in by itself and the same with social context, depending on the trust. However, it may not always be auto-populated, so you want to include that in. Now we move on to admission details. So the reason for their admission, you know, it says here recently diagnosed with RCC. Now these things are not codable terms. So when patients are looking for funding or for, um, you know, help later in the future, you want something that's properly coded in. So it's very important in this kind of situation to write renal cell carcinoma following presentation with hematuria. Um, date and time again of admission usually will be auto-populated, otherwise you can check the date um, of their admission on the system, and then admission method. So of course this was an elective admission as you can see here. Now it, we've included relevant past medical and surgical or mental health history. Here, yes, it says IHD, it says COPD, however, it is appropriate, but more appropriate to always include the full forms of all of these diagnoses. You want to write um, ischemic heart disease, um, chronic obstructive pulmonary disease rather than just COPD or IHD. Moving on to diagnosis, so here it has been made clear, it says renal cell carcinoma, left kidney, because you want to make clear which kidney it is as well, so if anyone else in the future looks back at the notes, and then we have the secondary diagnosis of DVT. So now we move on to the clinical summary what did the patient present with? They were admitted to HDU due to PMH. Now, this isn't appropriate. So you want to write, you know, as it says here on the side, admitted electively to HDU postoperatively in view of extensive comorbidities. So it's very clear. That's how you want it written. You want to make sure that there's no um, difficulty for anyone else to understand what's going on. And then you want to include the duration of how long were they in HDU and then any post-op complications. So here the complication is the swollen leg, which later revealed a DVT. And you want to make that really really clear. So as it says here, developed DVT in the left leg two days after surgery, but recovery was otherwise uneventful. And then when were the drains removed? So drains removed on day seven. Now the procedures that were done, so the exact procedure and its date, it's very important. You want to make sure the date is included. And then investigation results. So here they've all put it, they've put everything in one line, which is not a very appropriate. What you want to do is add this into a second new line. So there's no confusion about what this date refers to. Then we move on to discharge details and the plan. So again, usually this is auto-populated. And then we move on to plan and requested actions. So it says needs anticoagulation clinic review at local hospital. Now you need to make clear who is doing this job. Is it the GP? Is it the hospital? Who is organizing the coagulation clinic review? Um, then it's mentioned about the current smoker and refer to local smoking cessation service. Again, who is doing this? Is it the GP? Um, and if it is, then you should mention, say, GP to please refer to the local smoking cessation service. And remember, GPs have a lot of jobs to do. So saying please, saying thank you to the GP is always really well received. Finally, here it says, you know, the patient is happy to return to the care, but he wants to stay in contact. And that's completely fine. But what you do want to mention is, does the patient understand their diagnosis and their prognosis? And so you want to make that clear. So the patient understands the new diagnosis of renal cell carcinoma and understands the prognosis. And finally, their next appointment details. So it's Mr. Thomas in outpatient department in three weeks. Now, this is what I was saying before. You want to include whether or not we are organizing that appointment or someone else is organizing it. Or if there's already a date and time, then it's worth just putting that down yourself as well. Finally, we move on to medication and allergies. So looking at the medication, you can see that um, he's on very few things, but one of those things is enoxaparin, which obviously is um, the same as tinzaparin, depending on what trust you're in. And it's once daily, it's for a DVT. Again, with these two things, you wanna be making sure you're writing down the full indication. So you wanna write deep vein thrombosis, infective exacerbation of COPD, uh, sorry, of chronic obstructive pulmonary disease. And then there's no change to any of the patient's previous medication and that's fine. Allergies, there's no known drug allergies, so it's better of course to write this in full form, but NKDA is a very well-known um, abbreviation. 
Finally, the person completing the record, so the doctor, location, hospital, and date and time, and then who it's been checked by, which sometimes will just be a pharmacist and not a consultant. All right, that's everything, guys. Make sure to, um, if you have any questions, to contact us on the website, on Facebook, on YouTube, or on Instagram, and we'll see you all later.